Well, good evening. It is uh, Tuesday. Just check my watch. It is indeed Tuesday and it is the 2nd of April 2013 uh, and I hope you can see me um, because I believe there are a few issues. Um, hopefully they will resolve themselves over the coming few minutes. Um, but it is Tuesday the 2nd and you're watching Vapor Scene on Vapor Trails. Oops, Vapor Trails TV. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health e Vape. UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. Yes, it is Tuesday and it's a paper scene. Good evening, it's Marco here to guide you through the next 30 minutes of uh, stuff. <laughs> We're going to start in a moment with a little uh, vapor trail that I filmed uh, last week uh, and I did that on Thursday after uh, VT Talk on the Wednesday night. So it's a little bit about that. Um, but before all this other shenanigans appeared, uh, which was discussed um, very briefly on Saturday night with uh, Dave Dawn and also then on Sunday on Dave's Tackle Box with the gents. Uh, and it is that nasty piece of work, uh, another draft proposal, uh, a counter proposal if you like. Um, if you haven't seen it, get along and have a look at uh, Dave's Tackle Box on Sunday night uh, and I'm sure that Mr Dawn will be covering that in some detail uh, tomorrow night. Um, but we're also going to look at the MT3 uh, and uh, a rewick that I did following Andy's rewick that he showed on Saturday. So uh, there's that to come in a couple of parts. So we're going to start with my little EU rant. Hello. You'll probably notice a couple of things. Uh, one. There's no road noise. Uh, and two, there's no moving images in my uh, windows. That's because I'm parked up for a change. <laughs> I thought I'd do this while I was parked up at my destination. Uh, and I'm currently sat in my car in Washington, Tyne and Weir. Because that's where I am working today. Um, and as you know, I do these vapor trials in the car because I spend so much time in the car. Uh, and it gives me a chance to uh, get something uh, done on VT for the show. So I thought I would just talk about first of all last night's VT talk, last night being the 27th of March uh, and Dave Dawn played a piece of VT uh, which showed the MP for rugby, Mr Pawsey, uh, talking about e-cigs in the Commons. So I arranged to visit a new retailer with a business called Smoke No Smoke run by a very entrepreneurial Jim Lacey and this business sells e-cigarettes and on my visit I learnt about the product and though the customers for the product are often people uh, seeking to give up smoking who have come to include a member of my own staff and it's through his contact and his visit to the shops that I became aware of a potential EU directive which is of particular concern to this sector and this a directive could bring this particular business to an end and affect many people who are trying to uh, stop smoking. Now of course most smokers know that smoking is bad for their health and many have wanted to quit but quit rates are extremely low, with only 3 to 5% of people uh, seeking to quit managing to do so. And yes, there were many people actually sat on the benches, uh, and they weren't all awake. Go figure. However, as was explained in the show, everything that happens in the Commons goes into Hansard, and those people who need to know will know that that um, conversation, speech, debate, whatever you would call it, took place. And Mr. Pawsey was talking about e-cigs in a really good way, uh, in my opinion, uh, and was saying he got letters from his constituents and the um, regulations that are forthcoming in the TPD, the Tobacco Products Directive, 
uh, with the strength of e-liquid was not good enough uh, and um, it would mean that his constituents would be going back to smoking. Um, so really encouraging piece of VT there from Dave. But then the other Dave, Dave Kitson, um, was talking about his MEP, Glenis Wilmot, or will not, as has been uh, mentioned in some of the forums. But uh, he also put up a graphic of how to contact uh, Mrs. Wilmot on her blog. Gary Wood said, coffee is addictive, alcohol is addictive, sex is addictive. Will they regulate that too? Kerry Henderson said the studies that have been done on nicotine have stated that the TSNAs are negligible and that's on nicotine derived from a tobacco source. Mm -hmm. So uh, we really need to get on to our MPs, get on to our MEPs in a good way. We need to make sure we're using the right language, giving them the proper facts, but also not being too overly heavy handed in how we... Um, how we pass on um, what we're thinking because what we don't want to do is annoy them uh, we want to annoy them in a good way but not a bad way is what I'm saying basically so down here you'll see it get yourself down to uh, they work for you uh, and find out who your MEP and your MP is please and write to them follow them on Facebook follow them on Twitter do whatever you can to pass on um, what we, the vaping community, um, want out of the Tobacco Products Directive, and it's not—it's uh, <laughs> not being able to buy, you know, tiny little bottles of juice at a strength that is completely useless to us. We want to do what we do, uh, and not be hampered by the European Union, um, you know. But there you go. That is my little rant over. Indeed, that was my little rant while I was sat in the car on the, on Thursday morning. Um, I did actually do some more during the day um, and I did a little juice review and I will show that next week. Um, and of course, since things have developed even more um, since Wednesday, it really is important that we do all we can to get in contact with our MEPs and our MPs uh, and just be careful how we actually email them and what words we use we need to make sure that we're getting the right information um, across to them uh, it's not quit or die it's change you know um, and a lot of a lot of influence has been put on people saying that they, they're using e-cigs to stop smoking uh, that's not going to help us um, not in any way it's just going to fuel the fire for for Brussels and uh, the EU to say well if they're using it as a quit aid let's make it medicinal so please do what you can, get down to where they work for you uh, and get on to your MPs and MEPs. <sighs> so that bit being said, <laughs> I don't know if you saw Andy's show on Saturday and if you didn't, get on and have a look on YouTube or on the V player, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, and he did a little rebuild of a Kanga MT3, but he made a little error and ended up with a mouthful of juice. So. Here's a proper way of doing it. <laughs> Here's part one. This is how we are going to correctly rebuild a coil on the Kanga MT3. This is an MT3, 510 connection, a drip tip that doesn't come off because you need to fill it from the bottom. So you unscrew your bottom section and that is your tube where you fill. So we're going to put that aside for one moment and talk about this section here. Let me zoom in for you. Tube that fits into the centre on the actual body uh, and here you can see the wick which is actually quite short and if you look at it from above you can see that the wick doesn't go past this silicon stopper there. So what we're going to do is we're going to disassemble this and then we'll put a new coil on. So uh, let's disassemble. So to take this apart we need to uh, slide off this silicon ring at the top and just very gently with a bit of pressure 
pull out the center post and set that aside. We're then left with the existing burnt out coil on the wick uh, and we need to remove that but first of all we need to remove this center pin uh, and you need a pair of long nose pliers or a similar type of tweezers and we're just going to go in and grab this center pin either side and pull it out and there we go that's your center pin so we'll just put that to one side you can also see in there another silicon grommet and we're going to take that out as well and there it is so we'll just put that aside and then we can remove very easily our wick with the coil and there we go you can actually see what's happened because this other post is broken so that's why it has failed in the first place so we can get rid of that we don't need that what we're going to do is build a new one and it all looks in reasonable nick so a good clean may not go amiss I've already washed this um, and dried it off before I started just to make sure there's no juice on it now we need to think about a wick and I've got some here glass fiber wick um, I'm just seeing how wide it is I haven't got any wide wicking at the moment so what I might do is use some of this point two um, and make a multi-core so what I'm going to do now is just make a multi-core fold it in half fold it in half again and we'll see how that fits yeah that's not too bad so what we're going to need to do is to put a coil on this so out comes the trusty paper clip straighten paper clip every rebuilder's uh, perfect tool and we need to hold the wick in onto the paper clip with one hand and coil with the other uh, and I have already cut a length this is a length of 0.212 nichrome so I don't have any canthal at the moment um, and I'm going to give this five wraps so leave a nice long post and then we'll start to wrap so get the first one done one two three four and five then bring that round again so we have five wraps and what you can do is just make sure they're lovely and evenly spaced so you don't get any hot spots you don't get any of the coils touching each other because that will obviously create a short and we don't want that what we can then do is take away the paper clip and we are left with our coil now at this stage it's a good idea to then clip the rest of the wire so you've got two matching legs uh, so I'll just do that so get it into shot for you what you can see there is two quite long posts because it needs to be quite long um, so you can do the next stage and you can see there we have our coil so at this stage what I want to do is just introduce that into the 
bottom section and see how it is for alignment. So just push the wires through the hole, which is a huge hole, but is the wires are being a bit uh, temperamental. There we go. So what we need to do is to make sure that the entire coil is within the center circle and not touching. So I need to uh, just fertile with these a little bit to uh, get them into a smaller coil. Easier said than done if you've got big hands like me. But it can be done with a little bit of fertiling. And we'll just put that back in and see what it fits like. Well, that finished quicker than I thought. <laughs> uh, just to, towards the end of that, one of my cats jumped on, so that was me shooing the cat away. Um, but there you go. Yes, we'll uh, we'll catch up with the second part of that um, after the ad breaks and uh, or ad break, uh, which is coming up. Uh, when I press this button. So I will see you after the ads in a couple of minutes. Vapor Scene is proudly sponsored by Health EV, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. in Yorkshire for your EC needs. That's iVeber.co.uk and iVeber-elixir.co.uk. iVeber and iVeber-elixir.co.uk are proud sponsors of VeberTrails.tv. Now it's back to Vaporseed on Vapor Trails TV. Vaporseed is proudly sponsored by Health e Vapor, UK purveyor of e cigarettes and e liquid. We have got coming up the second part of the MT3 rebuild, um, but before we do that, we're going to go into this week's Show Us Yours gallery and find out who has won the bottle of juice this week. So, have a little look. And now it's time for Show Us Yours, sponsored by Flavor Art UK.
show is yours. Sponsored by Flavor Art UK. Yes, that was the show is yours gallery for this week. I just noticed on there that I did the same photo twice. Twice. Um, <laughs> the thing when you're trying to put videos together at the last minute. Anyway, there you go. So let's see who has won this week. Da -da 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 -da. It is Jason Yeomans who sent this picture in of his rather retro uh, 70s robot guarding what looks like a lava tube to me. Um, well done, Jason. I will email you after the show and we'll find out how you get your bottle of juice. And if you would like to go into the gallery and get picked out possibly to win a 30ml bottle of juice from our friends over at Flavor Art UK, you know what to do. Vapor scene at vaportrails.tv. Send in your pictures uh, and if you do win it'd be nice to get a picture of you with your juice um, and you can let us know what you think about it. So there you go. Now it's time for the second part of the uh, MT3 rebuild when I find the video. There it is. Um, see you in a minute. It's always worth taking your time because if you don't take your time you end up doing what Andy did uh, which he showed you on his show on Saturday which is not put it back correctly and get a mouthful of juice and end up with the nickups. I am back. I got the hiccups. The nickups. This has got a bit of juice in my mouth. Oh. oh. And if I show you what's happened. Oh. oh. Big juice leak. So, got my little screwdriver, which is perfect just for moving coil within an attic. coil in the centre there which is fine. So we can move on to the next stage and the next stage is going to be having this put back together. Uh, and what I've done there is the, the uh, legs that come off the coil from both sides you just need to move one to the top and one to the bottom. And that's because we're going to put the grommet and also the centre post back in. This leg, the leg that's on the uh, on the bottom, um, which is probably the top for you. Yes. So the top for you. This is the bottom for the bottom for you. This is the top for you. It's opposite round for me because I'm working kind of backwards. So this is the top. This is the bottom. This top post we're going to use for the centre post, and this bottom we're going to use for the um, negative side. So the first thing we need to do is to reintroduce our little grommet which I've just dropped. There we go. Introduce our little grommet and we need to make sure that we put this over the post that is going to be your positive because that needs to be in the center. So we'll just slide that down and then you need your little tweezers and you just need to squash the end of the grommet so it'll fit in. Sometimes it might be handy to use some uh, juice just to lubricate it slightly. Okay, <laughs> I think that's just about in. Uh, I need to make sure I don't pull it out again. I've swapped to some uh, pointy tweezers um, and you can see there that the grommet is just about all the way down now. Um, so I'm just going to push it down a little bit more. I 
Okay, so we now have our negative post on the outside of the grommet and our positive post through the center of that grommet. What we're going to do now is reintroduce the pin, the center pin. So we'll do that, I'll use my pliers because they're a bit easier to hold. So, got the pin and we're going to introduce the pin into the center, there we go, but keeping the wire on the outside edge, so in the middle of the grommet but not through the center of the post. And I'm just going to push that home all the way. There we go. Now, you may see some of the grommet, get it into shot for you, you may see some of the grommet around the outside, that's not too bad. Um, if for, if uh, you, uh, you do see that, it shouldn't be leaking. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is to remove the excess of our wire. Okay, so I've just cut the other one off there. Uh, we can just bend that one round because that's to the centre post anyway. You really need a pair of sharp nail scissors or really small um, wire clippers to do this. Um, scissors, that kind of size, scissors are too big. So, there you go. So we've got our coil and our wick set up. First thing we need to do is to uh, check it. Quick meter in, positive on the center post, negative on the outside. Give me a reading of 1.9 to 2 ohms. That's going to be about 1.8, 1.6, 1 1.8 taking off the resistance of my cables. I've just put it on the MT3 like Andy did just to see um, if we are working and we are working indeed. Got a slight hotspot issue there, we'll just solve that. There we go, right, let's put a bit of juice on. Oh, dry burn it too much. Bit of juice on. And there we go. We are vaping away. So, I might as well leave that on there for the moment. What we need to do now is just to trim our wick. Uh, and at the beginning, you remember I said that the wick only comes out to the edges of this uh, little plastic area. So I'm going to trim it back to there. Uh, it's one side. Turn it round so it's easy for me to do. And two sides. Just pull that through slightly. Okay, the other thing to do is just to put another piece on top. And I've already cut a little section, and this bit that goes on top stops it from spitting. So that will soak up juice as well, but it will stop the, uh, the atty from spitting back. So we'll do one final test without that on just to see that everything is still working. Yes it is. So we put the uh, little piece on top, the anti-spit bit, put our post back on, which is what Andy didn't do. Naughty Andy. There we go. Post back on and then our silicon cap goes back onto there. And we are ready to reassemble back into our unit. So let's go and see how it vapes. Yes indeed, back to me. And there it is. Um, I did actually show you that tube, uh, the black one, in the beginning of the video. That's because this one was full of juice at the time. 
Um, so I just wanted to show you a tube. Um, but yes, does it vape? Yes, it does. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. There you go. And it's been working very nicely um, since yesterday when I filmed that video. <laughs> um, it's been working very nicely indeed. Um, so it's all about just taking your time. Um, make sure that you put everything back the way you took it off. Um, I'm the worst one for losing screws when I've taken things apart and I've got one bit left over or whatever so I try to be methodical uh, and if you do all that and you put everything back as you found it to start off with you shouldn't get any juice uh, astray um, so there you go anyway I've gone over oh dear um, so <laughs> I better wrap up quick uh, quick thank you very much for tuning in I hope you found that um, of some use uh, and I will see you next week um, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next week but uh, I'm sure I'll think of something well I've got a juicy view yes I've got uh, a juicy view from Mr Gary Dibley next week uh, which is uh, quite a good one uh, and some other stuff besides don't forget to tune in to the rest of the shows for the rest of the week tomorrow night's VT talk should be a corker so I shall probably be there in chat with you looking for my credits uh, so I will see you next time <laughs> Tati bye. Vapazine is proudly sponsored by Health Evape, UK purveyor of e-cigarettes and e-liquid. <laughs>